Hey, what's going on you guys? Before I get into the topic of this video, I just want to let you guys know that if you like my hat or some of the Gundam themed shirts you've seen me wearing maybe in a couple of recent videos, uh, if you like that stuff, go ahead and go check out my good friend Tim's online shop at the Child of Mecca. I'll put the link down below. He didn't ask me to say this or pay me to say this or anything like that. I'm just trying to support my friend and he's got some really cool stuff on his shop there. So go check that out if you guys want to wear some Gundam themed clothing. Anyway, uh, this video I want to talk to you guys about the new Gundam series that was revealed today. Uh, it's really, really exciting. I'm not sure exactly how I feel about some of the aspects yet, but I just want to talk with you guys about what we know about it so far. Basically, we don't really know a whole lot, so a lot of it's going to be basically up to speculation. But we did get quite a few like new figures and kits announced, and then we can see a little bit about the story, and then we're going to take a look at the trailer. Um, so first, yeah, I just want to start off uh, just talking about basically the new Gundam itself. Then I'll talk about the new like products that were announced. And then at the end of this video, I'm going to go through uh, like scene by scene of the trailer and just kind of talk about basically what we can see in the trailer and what we can assume or know about the story so far. So uh, we knew that the uh, title was going to be G Teketsu, or that was what the site was going on. Uh, for a while at first. Uh, teketsu means blood and iron ore, uh, also kind of means military might as well, so we knew it was going to be something sort of related to that. Uh, we now have the actual title, which is uh, Teketsu no Orphans, uh, which it means like iron-blooded orphans is what they're going for, for the actual name of the series now in English. So iron-blooded orphans definitely has a very interesting uh, ring to it. I mean, it definitely sounds a lot darker than what we've usually come to expect from a Gundam series, so uh, if the series is actually dark, I'm not sure if how dark it's going to actually be based on what we can see in the trailer. The trailer looks pretty um, tame, but it is very, very early to tell anything about that, so we'll just have to see. The series itself is going to be premiering uh, October 4th in Japan, and then I'm not sure about if they're going to be doing uh, streaming of that on YouTube like they did with Build Fighters as well, uh, simultaneously, so we can watch it outside of Japan as well. We'll just have to see. I don't think they mentioned anything about that in the press conference itself. At the press conference they did reveal the big uh, figure of the new Gundam which is going to be called Gundam Barbatos and just before anyone starts going off and calling it Gundam Barbados pronouncing it like the country Barbados the Japanese katakana says Barbatos so it should be pronounced as a T not as a D um, just in case there's any confusion with anyone there. It's not a country, it's actually named after a demon. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, interestingly, the Barbados Gundam already exists. There has already been a Barbados Gundam. And uh, it was from the SD Gundam G Generation World game, I guess. I don't really know much about those games, but um, it's a very unique design you can see there. But anyway, Barbatos is the name of a demon who is a uh, earl and duke of hell apparently in demonology and uh, about among his powers uh, so to speak that he supposedly has is the ability to talk to animals and also to tell the future so I don't know how we're, if that's gonna have any relevance at all that could possibly be relevant in a way but as far as I know um, Gundam series, although a lot of the Gundam names take their namesake from something else, it's not very often that they ever have anything else more in common with their namesake other than just the name, so probably not, but it's just something interesting anyway. Um, and then just taking a look at just the design of the Gundam, I think that it, uh, it's very interesting. It's definitely not as uh, intimidating as it was looking in like the first image that we saw. That was like the teaser image before the actual release or before the actual like uh, launch press conference. To me, it really kind of reminds me of like that very first uh, teaser image that we had, or not really teaser image, but it was more of like the really concept art image for Reconquista and G or G Reco as it was being called at that time, um, where it was just like a really thin mobile suit. And I think at that time they were saying like that it was really thin so that they could. Uh, put on different parts onto it when they need, and that seems like that's going to be kind of what they're going for in this as well, so I wonder how much was drawn from that. And that, as well as the Savior Gundam as well, also has a kind of similar kind of thing where the frame itself is very thin and stupid looking, 
and then they just kind of can change the parts on it as they see fit. Uh, both of those designs looked pretty ugly in my eyes. This new one also doesn't really look that good. I don't know. Uh, in the kit form, it doesn't look too bad. We'll take a look at that in a minute, but uh, the artwork itself doesn't really look very good. The waist is super thin, which uh, just from a realistic standpoint doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Just the design itself I think is okay, I don't really mind the waist all that much. It's the legs that really bother, bother me the most. The legs are very strange looking, especially below the knee. The feet are kind of weird, goofy, I think I could probably deal with that, but it's just like the lower half of the legs is what's like the thing that throws me off uh, the most. They're so super thin, I just not really... I don't really like it, but then there's also the V-fin, and the V-fin looks like a huge yellow boomerang stuck to the front of the head, also not really looking that good. Again, that's just all my personal taste, and we haven't really seen the Gundam in action and like what it's going to be able to do and then how it's going to change as the seri series progresses. Um, that's one of the things that they told us in uh, the information we've got about it so far. It says that the Gundam is a relic from a previous war. Uh, and it starts at kind of as a wreck, so like the Gundam is like just very uh, as a wreck in the beginning. I don't really know how else I can put that. Uh, and then gets stronger as they as they defeat more enemies and upgrade the parts bit by bit. So the Gundam itself is going to kind of evolve and grow and hopefully kind of bulk up a bit as the series progresses. Uh, we'll have to see. It says that the Gundam shares the same uh, base inner frame as the other mobile suits. So uh, basically they can cannibalize the parts and the weapons and the armor as the story progresses. So the inner frame will be um, kind of universal uh, for the Gundams in this series, which should be pretty interesting when it comes to taking a look at the kits, and we'll see that in just a moment. Then we also got a look at this mobile suit, which is the Glaze, which looks to be the grunt mobile suit of the series, or at least for the first part of the series. It also looks to be basically the Zaku of the series just because of its colors for one and just kind of the um, some other features of it we'll take a look at here in a minute as well uh, but this definitely looks like something out of like frame arms or Gundam Age and that is one thing I forgot to say at the start of this video about uh, the series a lot of the production team working on this series it has history of working on Gundam Age as well as Double O so I think we're gonna see a lot of aspects from Double O and Age in this, at least in like the artwork and the design and st things like that in the series. So let's talk about uh, some of the products that we're going to be getting released with this uh, as well. We have the announcement of a Next Edge Barbados Gundam. Um, the, it's set to be coming out in winter and looks really nice actually in that form. So that's why I think like I'm not really liking the initial artwork that we have for the Gundam, but I think when I see it in like kit form and things like that, kit and figure form later, it's going to make me sort of like it a bit more. It's just that that initial artwork is not really very appealing. Because I think this Next Edge figure looks really nice. It's coming with that kind of hammer or lance sort of thing. I'm not sure the exact technical term what to call that. I'm sure it has one. Uh, and then also a sword as well. And then we can see on display with that, we've got two prototypes. Uh, for two other Next Edge figures that are going to be coming out at some point in the future, possibly. Um, one of them is a variant of the glance, uh, Glaze, and so that's kind of the high mobility kind of type, sort of, of the Glaze. We'll uh, have to see. And then there's also going to be uh, two different versions of the Barbatos Gundam coming out in kit form, the first one being an HG, uh, so we've already got the HG being announced for October and for only 1,000 yen, so really, really cheap. Um, that's also coming with the same weapons, uh, just that same hammer lance thing, and then the sword as well. I do, uh, the hammer lance thing uh, is interesting. The sword, I like the look of the sword though, it's definitely really unique, and it's nice that it's like a physical sword instead of a beam uh, sword, so that's going to be an interesting change as well. In one of the display kits, they have the shoulder uh, armor off of it, so I think that's just sort of to display that, like how even in the HG, uh, a lot of the armor and, and like future armor parts that we're going to get are going to be interchangeable, and uh, it's going to be very customizable. 
So then along with that we're getting an HG kit of the Glaze as well, coming out in October as well for the same price, 1,000 yen. Uh, and you can tell that this is uh, definitely the Zakra of the series based on its weapons loadout as well, as it looks like it's coming going to be coming with an axe as well as some sort of rifle. So we don't know if that rifle is using um, beam ammunition or real ammunition, uh, physical ammunition or whatever you would call it as well. Uh, we're not sure yet. And then as I said, there is a variation of the glaze that we can see here in blue. So very reminiscent of Reconquista and G, how we had the Jahannam, uh, the Space Jahannam in the standard green color and then the blue for the commander type. It looks like we're going to have the same kind of thing here with this, except for like the blue. Instead of a commander type, it might just be a high mobility type or a space type. Uh, we're not exactly sure about that, but we can see that there is going to be a uh, commander antenna on that, so just another similarity to the Zaku, so it's definitely, I think, safe to say that's the Zaku of the series. Okay, then we have the first HG Orphans part set. Now, this is set one, but it's probably safe to assume that we're going to be getting quite a few more of these sets as the story progresses. And I think that's probably just going to be how it's going to go with this series, that maybe not for the other kind of non-Gundam mobile suits or grunt mobile suits, but at least for like the main protagonist mobile suit or suits, um, we are going to get, just be getting like add-on part sets for that because I think that's going to be kind of a big part of this story. So this is going to include a very large cannon, uh, which looks good because the remember the base kit itself doesn't come with any sort of rifle or gun of any type, so this is actually the first actual gun that's going to have, uh, so a very large cannon there, uh, and then some sort of shot lance weapon as well, another physical weapon, and then a shield, and then a, one of those small tanks, we don't know exactly what to call those yet, uh, but in the trailer we'll take a look at in a bit. Uh, we'll see those tanks kind of zooming around. It's basically the mm, tank that's going to be on the side of the Gundam. So that stuff all looks really cool. And then we can also see this picture here as well on display with that. Uh, and it's showing some different kind of like arm shield and blade type uh, weapons. I'm not sure if that's going to be like maybe the part set 2. Uh, because we're not seeing that in the in the first picture that we got for the part set one, so maybe those parts are going to be included in part set two, or those are the parts that come with the uh, variation type of the glaze, and those can be used with the Gundam, or what, I'm not exactly sure yet, but we'll just have to see. Then we have this picture uh, showing all of the HGs on display, and we can see along with the Barbados and the glaze, uh, and the blue version of the glaze, and then we also have six other uh, HG kits here on display in uh, their prototype form, so they're just in these gray prototypes. Can't really see a whole lot about them. Uh, we don't know what colors they're going to be, or maybe some more details about the kits, we don't really know yet. Uh, but we can see, like, they're definitely very, very unique. Uh, they definitely look very similar to a lot of stuff that we saw from Rekongista and G recently. One of them has a huge giant hammer, and that one also has like some like chest cannons that look very similar to the Kshatriya. And then another one has a really huge long lance, and then just some really very unique designs. So I think uh, they're definitely, I mean, Reconquista and G had some pretty unique designs. I think they're taking it like even farther with this series maybe. Uh, so I don't know, we'll see how well that goes, but I'm not really sure if that's uh, really the right thing that they want to be doing. And there is also going to be uh, some new Gashapon, so there's those as well. And there's going to be a new Converge figure as well, for the at least uh, for the Barbados Gundam, so we'll have to see if uh, there's going to be any more Converge figures from the series coming out later, if and when. I guess it's more of a when than if. Uh, and then finally, there is the 1100 scale Barbados coming out in November for 2700 yen. So, um, they're not calling it a master grade, so I'm guessing that it's not going to be a master grade, that it's not exactly going to be a new line of 1100 scale Gundams, but it's just that for this particular series, they're not uh, calling it a master grade just because maybe they're just going to be very unique. So, um, as I said, as the official information said, the inner frame on these is exactly the same, or at least the, all of the Gundams are sharing the same inner frame, so I'm guessing what they're doing is, especially by the fact the picture is showing off the Gundam and the inner frame separately, 
is I guess that similar to the HGs is that we're going to have the Gundam and then later we're going to have just different parts sets available so you can just use that inner frame that you already have from the Gundam and then you can just switch on different parts sets or however you want to do it so it's going for uh, it being very customizable and then with other kits other than just the Barbados Gundam, other Gundams that we get from the series, if they're going to be using the exact same frame as well, um, maybe those are just going to be just like part sets rather than like the whole kit. Uh, not really sure, but it's definitely a possibility. For the price of 2700 yen, it's definitely very cheap. It's cheaper than um, the RE kits are going for now, so a full inner frame kit. I mean, it is very simplistic, even the inner frame looks very simplistic. The outer armor is not that much, and the weapons is not that much. It's just got the same weapons as the HG have, has, at least um, from what we can guess for the time being, is that it's just going to have the sword and that hammer lance thing. Um, but that's all we can really guess for the time being it's going to have in that. I'm not sure how many options it's really going to have for the hands, but at least the hands that we can see on the kit now are very reminiscent of Reconquista and G, high grade kits where they're just kind of very lame, boring looking hands that don't look good at all. I hope we're going to have some better options for this kit, but uh, if those hands are like one of the few options we have, that's going to be really disappointing. The other thing that we're not really sure yet is the red markings around on the knees and shoulders and chest. If those red markings are going to be stickers or actual red pieces underneath the white armor and that's like kind of cut out, hopefully it's going to be separate pieces, but we can probably assume it's going to be stickers, so you're going to have to either use red stickers or paint in that red yourself, or whatever color you want to do it in, I guess. So honestly, I think the kit itself does look pretty nice. I, like I said, I like the look of this kit much more than I like the look of the just artwork, the illustration of the Gundam, so I don't know, we'll have to see. And I think it is, like, as I've been looking at it over the course of, like, all day today, it is slowly growing on me already. So I think maybe by the time we get to, like, October, November, when these kits actually start coming out, I might actually like the design a lot more. We'll have to see. I think it's cool how basically what they're doing is, like, with the Gun and Build Fighters, I think a big part of the Gun and Build Fighters line was that they wanted to push for people to be able to easily customize their kits by having uh, kind of universal joints and things like that that you can switch parts and switch backpacks and all of that. I think they're basically Bandai's taking that to the next level and like making that a huge part of the series itself is like customizing and being able to switch parts and using an, a universal frame for the Gundam so that you can switch armor parts and all of that. I think that's definitely a sales tactic on Bandai's part uh, and that just means that Hopefully they didn't kind of half-ass the story uh, as just a way to try to figure out how they could really keep the sales of the kits up. I'm not sure, uh, but it's definitely uh, pretty obvious to see kind of maybe at least one of the reasons why they wanted to take this design aspect with the Gundams. Alright, let's talk about uh, a little bit what we know about the story and then get into the trailer. The uh, main characters uh, are... Uh, Mikazuki August and Orga Itsuka. So from what I saw of those characters and some of the other characters' names, a lot of Russian names are like Russian-sounding names in there. So, of course, there's a mix of Japanese and Russian-sounding names. So I don't know exactly if that's going to matter at all or be significant in the story at all. Uh, but basically, it, is, it says that this Gundam series is going to have a high drama so that's good, and a bunch of child soldier orphans, so kind of Metal Gear Solid Five kind of thing going on there. Uh, but that should be a really cool aspect of it. Um, something kind of unique, I mean, it is a kind of tired recipe of Gundam of using some really young kid to piloting the Gundam, but at least this time it's a little bit different that like his team is made up of child soldier orphans, that's pretty unique kind of. And basically they're going to band together and do some stuff. Looking, it says looking for a place to call home, I guess, I don't know. And then we have a uh, synopsis uh, of the story in Japanese, but once it's translated, it doesn't, it's hard to really understand clearly, it's hard to really make a whole lot of sense of, but uh, essentially there was a big war that ended 300 years previously, and um, then 
some stuff about Mars, maybe, so, like, maybe that's, instead of, like, Earth and the colonies fighting in space, going to be, like, people on Earth and people on Mars, something like that. And then, um, uh, something about a rebellion, of course, um, someone's going to be fighting for one side, and then think, oh, maybe the side that I'm fighting for is not the right side, and or starting some rebellion, something like that, some sort of split. And then, uh, the main characters are working for some sort of uh, guard security something and then there's a bunch in the translation about a crescent moon but I think what that is is actually just translating uh, a name one of the characters names I think it's the main character Mikazuki I think that name in Google translate translates to crescent moon but I think uh, so that's basically if you guys are reading the translation of that and read wondering what crescent moon is I think that's what it is it's the character's name Mikazuki uh, August so um, Orga and Mikazuki are the two main characters. Some of the other characters have some pretty interesting names as well. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and get into talking about the trailer. So the trailer opens up with this symbol, and basically what that is is the symbol of their group, or possibly rebellion. Anyway, the main character's um, sort of group symbol, so we're not really sure a whole lot about that yet. Then it opens with this shot of the main character, what we can assume is the main character is back doing a, like a pull-up and his back looks really strange. We can't tell if that is actually supposed to look like that. It's just very strangely illustrated muscle or it's like some sort of unique or slightly alien in some way. Don't really know. Then we get this text on screen and it says post-disaster 323. So I'm guessing this is the 300 years after the big war that is said happened. Uh, I'm not sure if the disaster is referring to the war or some cataclysmic event that maybe ended the war. Uh, we're not exactly sure what that means, but it's safe to assume that this is going to be the name for this um, like century that this series is taking place in, like Universal Century or Cosmic Century or um, After Colony, something like that. I'm guessing and this one is going to be post-disaster. Could be wrong about that, but uh, the Google translation of the synopsis said something else, kind of weird, but I think that this is maybe uh, what that's going to be called. Then jumping into some action, we have this tank battle going on between these two sides of the tanks. Uh, on this side, they're kind of these, they look a little bit more advanced uh, tanks in this kind of purplish uh, maroon color coming out of the smoke here. And then on the other side, we can see these uh, yellow tanks that seem to be using uh, physical ammunition rather than beam ammunition here. Uh, these are the yellow tanks that are going to be the small tanks we're going to be getting in the HD add-on part set. So that's those. And here on the front of the barricade we can see is the CGS. That is the uh, kind of team uh, name insignia uh, for the main character's kind of team. So we know that this is the side that the main characters are going to be fighting on here. Uh, then we get a mobile suit, a glaze, comes down and lands in the battle, something like that, and then stands up, and we can see it here looking very much akin with that head, looks very much akin to the uh, Vade or Mercurius from Gundam Wing, just with the kind of shape of the head and the square mono eye and then the um, antenna sticking up on the top. But again, as I said, the rest of the kit really reminds me of something from Frame Arms, but, or the rest of the mobile suit. Uh, and then uh, we continue on with some more battle, but well, this is a different battle because this one's going on in the daytime. Uh, two tanks, but these are two tanks from the same side uh, battling each other, so maybe this is the rebellion that the uh, story synopsis was talking about. Maybe this is what we can see is going on of maybe one of the characters kind of rebelling from the team here. Uh, that's assuming that uh, multiple sides of this war or this conflict are not using the same tanks. It's probably safe to assume they're not. And that these are two uh, friendly tanks fighting it out. And then one is destroyed. And then we can see uh, this picture here of our main character who is shirtless once again. And uh, just we can assume that he was the one piloting the tank that uh, destroyed the other tank. Then we get this panning down shot of this city. And I guess this is going to be maybe the landscape where the story is going to start off. We can assume that it's going to, the story is going to take us all over the place in many different places, but this is the, the only really big landscape shot that we get of any sort of setting for this uh, so far. It doesn't really look uh, all that particularly interesting. 
uh, but we'll see if that maybe has any more significance uh, as we move along in the story. Next, then we get a scene of the characters all sitting down having some lunch or something here, so we're getting to see some more of the characters. Personally, a lot of the characters I think look really generic, not very interesting at all. Um, there's our main character there, Miyazuki sitting in the center, and then a couple of the other characters. And here's uh, Orga with the purple hair there on the side, and we can see that he is um, the other main character that we've got. And then we can see, sitting behind them, all of them are wearing these green jackets. And we can see in this picture that on the back of the jackets is that CGI, or it's not CGI, CGS, uh, which is their team uh, kind of, uh, what do I want to say? Abbreviation for their team. And then something in else interesting we can see here is that the character that stands up behind Orga uh, has a red stripe on his back, on his jacket, so we can probably assume that that's a commander. So he's maybe uh, maybe the, their team leader or their commander, their commanding officer there. And uh, he and Orga kind of exchange a glance there momentarily. So I'm guessing what that, uh, that's what that red stripe on his jacket means there. Uh, then we cut to outer space and we have this ship and it looks a little bit like a cargo ship, but we really don't know anything about it at this point. Behind the cargo ship, though, we can, or behind the ship, whatever kind of ship it is, we can see there's a red planet. So that is what we can assume will be Mars. And this is going to be uh, where whatever is going on with Mars is uh, going to be hinted at here in just this very quick image. This is the only thing that we're seeing anything that looks even anything remotely Mars related at this point. And then we cut to this character, who, uh, as far as I know, we don't know who, what the name of this character is. Uh, but to me, it looks like this is going to be possibly our Char clone for this series, our Char-esque kind of character. He looks like he's supposed to be a bad guy here with his very kind of royal guard-looking kind of clothing on. And then he glances up to his, uh, what we can guess maybe is his like number two, his sidekick here, or uh, his apprentice, or his like main... Uh, top soldier or whatever, I don't know, whatever. Anyway, it looks very uh, similar to like Full Frontal and Angelo Sopper uh, with the guy having his long uh, purple hair. Very reminiscent of uh, looking like a Angelo Sopper kind of character there. Just slightly less crazy. And then uh, we cut back to what we can assume is probably Earth. And then here is uh, one of the, uh, I think probably the first female character that we're seeing. And she's just some uh, young, kind of um, poor-looking female character here in this uh, very poor-looking rundown shop or house or something. Uh, definitely looks like she's like the Sochi Haim of the uh, series. Uh, you know her from uh, Turn A. Um, the female characters uh, seem that we can see in this trailer remind me a lot of Turn A. How like this is maybe Sochi Haim, and then the, uh, the next female character we'll see is. Also looks like another female character from Turn A. Uh, so we cut to here and this big kind of greenhouse. And uh, it's maybe safe to assume that this is on Mars, or at least in outer space, because just because of the look of this, how everything we saw on Earth so far is looking very earthy. This definitely looks something totally different. It's definitely in some very rich, probably royal um, garden here. And then we get a look at the girl's face. And then this, I think, is probably going to be maybe the main love interest of the main character in this story. Uh, maybe not at first, but uh, maybe as the story progresses. And this character reminds me of uh, the princess, uh, Diana, from uh, Turn A. So, uh, so of the two female characters that we've got so far, they definitely remind me a lot of the, our two main female characters from Turn A. But... Uh, can't really see anything else much about her. She's mouthing some words in this scene, but we don't know, of course, what she's saying at all. Uh, then we cut back to another action scene again, some more tank battles, so not really any uh, mobile suit battles yet. These tanks, those larger kind of purple tanks, might transform in some way, but we're not uh, sure about that yet. We can see this one smaller tank sort of zipping around them and just like destroying all the larger tanks, and then Cut inside that tank again, and we can see here's our uh, protagonist again, Mikazuki. Well, we can assume is inside that tank that's taking all the other tanks out. Just a close-up of his face there. He's still not wearing a shirt, so interesting. Maybe he just doesn't wear clothes very often. Then uh, look at this character's face. This character's name is Biscuit. 
Uh, that's interesting. He's uh, going to be the kind of chubby comic relief character, I can assume. And then we get a close-up look at Orga's face. And uh, he's looking much more menacing here. I think what we can probably assume that uh, Mikazuki and Orga are going to be sort of uh, the opposites. They're going to be kind of butting heads, that maybe they're working on the same team, but where Mikazuki is going to be the more kind of... Uh, peaceful one, and then Orga is going to be the one that like just wants to go out and kill everybody, judging by the look on his face here, it looks sort of like that. Then we get our first look at the Gundam, finally, and just its side profile here with a lot of detail. We can see huge V-fin uh, sticking up on the front of the head, and then we uh, get this sort of zoomed out image here of the Gundam just standing there holding that uh, sort of axe. Uh, axe, hammer, lance thing that uh, the kid's going to be coming with, with that shield, a very small, simple shield on its arm there, so I'm guessing that's going to be maybe some of the first weapons that's going to be having in the series. And then we get another shot of uh, Mikazuki. Finally, he's wearing a jacket now. It's a very um, unique jacket. Interestingly, his jacket does not have the uh, CGS on the back of it, so I don't know if that has any significance, but it might. Maybe he has left that group, or maybe he's just very low in the group that he doesn't actually have that uh, insignia on the back. He's turned around looking up at, of course, the Gundam here, which is sort of kneeled down with all of the plugs plugged into it, like we saw in the uh, original image of the Gundam. He's looking up at that, and then we get another look at the Gundam's face here from the front this time, with all of these maintenance cords kind of plugged into it. So I'm guessing this is going to be how we're going to be introduced to the Gundam, maybe like this, before it's up and moving around. Not exactly sure, but probably safe to assume that uh, this is how the Gundam is going to appear in the first episode. And then we cut to the title here, you can see it says um, Tekatsu no Orphans, so uh, Iron-Blooded Orphans. So that is it for the trailer. It's definitely interesting and there's a lot of stuff that I think uh, could be really cool in there. The characters, like I said, don't really look all that particularly interesting. Uh, didn't really see a whole lot of mobile suits in there at all. We saw a little bit of the glaze, a little bit of the Gundam. We never actually saw the Gundam moving, uh, so that's going to be something we'll have to see. We don't know what the inside of the cockpit's going to look like. It's, it's probably got a very interesting uh, design for the cockpit there as well. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So thank you guys. I think that's pretty much all we know so far. I'm sure I maybe missed a few details here and there. I didn't give any of like the names of like the director or like mobile suits, uh, mecha designer, character designer, stuff like that. If you really want to know the names of those people, you can go look them up. I tried to give you guys as much details as we have at the moment. It's only been like 13, 14 hours since the uh, release of the press conference. So we don't really know a whole lot, but what we do know is pretty exciting and definitely intriguing. So I'm sure over the course of the next couple weeks, we're going to be getting a lot more info, especially at the end of the month when the magazines come out and we start seeing you know, some of the stuff that's going to be announced in the magazines or more detailed information than what we know at the moment. So I'll cover all of that in uh, the next Gunpla News video. So we'll go over anything, any more info that we have at that time. Otherwise, let me know what you guys think so far. Leave some comments down below. Uh, do you think something differently from what I thought or did you notice something that I missed? Or did you just have any other thoughts or ideas that you want to share? Let, uh, let us know down below or let me know on my Facebook page and have some discussion about it. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Hope that was helpful. I'll see you next time.